Free body diagrams refers to force with arrows and particles as dots or circles. So if we have an object on which weight is acting, we will give the weight as an arrow. And that's all. That's a free body diagram. Now there are two types of free body diagrams. The first type of free body diagram is object in mid air. If an object is in mid air, what would happen? The first force, which is basically a push or a pull, would be weight. And it would be held in mid air by a string. And the force that acts on a string is called tension. So if it is applied by two strings, so we can call this tension 1 and tension 2. So that's how we draw the free body diagram of object in mid air. On the other hand, there can be a surface. Now there can be two types of surfaces. It can be a plane surface or it can be an inclined plane which is also known as a ramp. Now if it's a plane surface, in addition to the weight, it would also have a reaction force that the plane surface gives on the object. Now the weight is always a vertical and the reaction force is always perpendicular to the surface. So if it was an inclined plane, then the weight would still be vertical but the reaction force since it is perpendicular to the surface would be drawn like this in the free body diagram. Now when we have planes the plane can either be a smooth plane or a rough plane. If it's a smooth plane that means friction would not act on that object but on the other hand if it's a rough plane in that case friction would act if it's either moving or in limiting equilibrium and friction would act in the opposite direction of the motion. For example, if we have this object trying to move towards the right, in that case we will have friction acting towards the left. In this case, if the object is trying to move downward, then the friction would act upward in the opposite direction to motion. Now in mid-air, force is applied to objects using strings and the force that is applied is called tension. For object on a plane surface, force can be applied using other type of force. And that force can be applied at an angle or it can be applied along the plane. In case of inclined plane, the force can be applied in three ways. It can either be applied as a horizontal force so that the angle of the plane is equal to the angle of the force applied. It can be applied along the plane or it can be applied at a different angle. If this is theta, then this force can be applied at another angle alpha. Of course, we will later have to break down the forces into components. For mid-air and plane surfaces, we break down the force into horizontal and vertical components. However, for inclined plane, we do not break down the forces into horizontal and vertical components.